so you guys asked for it. Time to slap some liquid metal underneath the Morpheus 2 cooler. Now, if you missed my previous video on the Morpheus 2 GPU cooler from Rajan Tech, I highly recommend you go and check that out first. But to sum everything up, we saw a pretty massive difference in load temperatures when we replaced the regular two slot SC2 cooler on my 1080 Ti. In the end, I said the mod was definitely worth doing if you have the room in your case for it, as in the end, you will be working with roughly a three and a half slot card if you're going to be using the regular 120 millimeter fans like I did. VRM and VRAM cooling was sufficient as well, as those high static pressure fans are pushing plenty of air through that heatsink. In this video though, we'll be mostly focusing on the application of liquid metal between the GPU die and the Morpheus 2 cooler, checking out the temperature difference and then discussing whether or not it's worth doing. The liquid metal compound that we'll be using is the Thermal Grizzly's Conductor Nort, and for those of you who don't know much about liquid metal, let me quickly explain what this is. Just like traditional thermal paste, Conductonaut is a liquid metal which is designed to be used as a thermal compound between processors and their heat sinks. Traditionally, this is used between CPU dies and their integrated heat spreader in the process of de-litting and replacing the stock thermal compound that's already there. Now, of course, given the different properties, the compounds are made of different metals with liquid metal compounds primarily containing gallium and then thermal pastes primarily containing silver and other fillers to make up the paste. As a result, the thermal grizzly conductor that we're using today has a lot more thermal conductivity at 73 watts per meter Kelvin compared to thermal pastes which are usually in the ballpark of 5 to 10 watts per meter Kelvin, depending on which brand you buy. And the big drawback is that liquid metal compounds are electrically conductive as well, and this means that they can short and damage your components if you're not careful. However, if you do take the necessary precautions, this can be avoided. Luckily, I haven't run into any damage yet in my time playing with it, although I have been pretty close. Also, you can find the paste and liquid metals that I do recommend in the description below if you guys are interested. Okay, so with the stock heatsink removed, clean off the old thermal paste that's on there with some isopropyl alcohol wipes and do this for the GPU die and the SMDs that are surrounding it as well. Now the next step is optional but is definitely recommended if you want to take the necessary precautions to keep everything safe, especially if you're working with the GPU like the 1080 Ti that we're using here. What we're going to be doing is masking off the SMDs around the die with an insulating material so that if any liquid metal spills off onto the side, those will not be shorted. This can be done with electrical tape, silicone glue, or you could even cover them in thermal paste if you want. I decided to use tape since it's not messy and it's not permanent either. Next, time to apply that liquid metal. You want to apply a very small amount to start with, spread it out onto the GPU die's contact area, and then keep applying it until you've got a very thin layer. You'll also want to do the exact same application on the heatsink as well, roughly where it'll be in contact with the GPU. It's also important to note that liquid metal is not suitable for aluminium cold plates as there will be a reaction, but for most GPU heatsinks out there that are made of copper, you'll be absolutely fine. The Morpheus 2, for example, has a copper cold plate with a mirror finish. So with the liquid metal on both sides now, we need to mount the Morpheus 2 cooler on the 1080 Ti with the included bracket as we did in the initial video. And now time to observe the temperature difference. Testing here was done at the three different fan settings just as before, 1000 RPM for our silent profile, 1500 RPM for our moderate profile, and then 2000 RPM for our performance fan profile. So just a quick reminder, the Morpheus 2 was over 30 degrees better compared to the stock EVGA SC2 cooler at a rather slow 1000 RPM. And the SC2 cooler unfortunately couldn't complete the full 15 minute test in Heaven 4.0 as it was thermal throttling. Now, with the liquid metal slapped on there, we get about a 3.5 degree improvement with the average load temperatures in the last 5 minutes sitting around 51.4 degrees C. So definitely not a huge reduction in temperature, but still significant nonetheless. And at this point, we can definitely say that the liquid metal has done its job. Stepping up the fan speed now to 1500 RPM, a moderate fan speed, but still virtually silent with open back headphones on, load temperatures now dip under 50 degrees C at 49.2. Again, we're seeing roughly the same delta between the Morpheus 2 before and after liquid metal application of around three to three and a half degrees C. 
In the final test with the fans now at a reasonably audible 2000 RPM, the Morpheus 2 with stock thermal paste as some of you may remember finally creeps itself under 50 degrees C and with the liquid metal we do see that drop by about 3 degrees down to 46.6. Now, 46.6 degrees C is insanely cool for an air-cooled GPU, but it's important to note here that even the EVGA SC2 cooler at this point is what I would call quite cool, with load temperatures under 65 degrees C. So, to wrap up, we're getting about a 3 to 3.5 degree reduction in temperature with the liquid metal when compared to the stock thermal paste. And by the way, the paste that I was using for the Morpheus 2 to begin with was just this standard cheap paste from Deepcool, definitely nothing special. So, the ultimate question is, was it worth it? Well, as I said before, with the Morpheus 2 cooler swap to begin with, we're already getting some very impressive reductions, with the fan speed at 1500 RPM being what I would personally recommend, as that provides more than enough headroom for overclocking and at a reasonable fan RPM as well. And remember, the cold plate is in direct contact with the GPU die here, and that's one of the primary reasons why we're not seeing an enormous temperature reduction, whereas with CPUs, the liquid metal actually functions as a gap filler between the die and the integrated heat spreader, hence the much larger reductions there. Now, if you're one of those people who see that three and a half degrees and is actually considering doing this, I honestly just suggest increasing your fan curve by a couple hundred RPM, as you'll get the exact same result without the inherent risk. Also note that you may experience different results with your cooler, as I've seen quite a few people claim anywhere from 0 to up to a 10 degree improvement depending on the card, so the 3.5 degree improvement that I'm getting may be limited to my GPU and cooler. I'd love to hear from you all down below though, and whether you're using liquid metal on your GPU and what sort of temperature reduction you're getting there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already guys, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.